this is huge. This, this answers the entire question. The laying on of hands that we see in scripture is for healing, not driving out demons. You just, you, you basically just stole anybody's thunder on this argument. Wednesday Quora College, Jess Romero, Dr. Dan Schneider. Dr. Schneider's got a book coming out in a few short weeks. This book is going to make waves in the Catholic Church. Uh, in, in, in the area of spiritual warfare, there's nothing like it. We'll be talking about that. A lot to talk about today, Dan. Uh, hey, Bob, thanks for coming out to Southern California and uh, giving some lectures out there, Dan. Uh, uh, yeah. people, people love you out there. you got a big fan base uh, out you there. You know what? It's fantastic. Against my better judgment, I went to California. Uh, thank goodness the Lord hasn't asked me to go to Michigan, uh, being a good Ohio guy. Michigan, number one enemy. California, Southern California, number two. I always I always start with the same joke in Southern California that Lou Holtz, our football coach at Notre Dame, said. He said, why do people choose to go to USC? And the answer is because it's easier to spell than UCLA. So we like, I like to pick on these guys a little bit, but no, it's a, it's a fine place. It's fantastic to travel around the country like you do. Even going, I'm going to Germany to travel, to work with teams there and train priests there to see faithful people. The church is alive. And what you guys did at Dodger stadium was amazing. It, it, you could, the, 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 the energy uh, and the excitement among Catholics was palpable. And, and for me, the next day when I got back, I heard Fox news, one of the announcements on Fox news talking about, Using the word prayerful reparation by Catholics <laughs> kneeling on broken asphalt. Yep. I mean, it wasn't out there protesting, you know, a uh, 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 looting and Antifa garbage. This was true. What you guys put together, you and your brother Johnny, who's a, a stud, by the way, <laughs> what you and Johnny put together and, and, and the help of the VMPR team was fantastic. A coalition of Catholics that are there for the right reason to do reparation, not only against this particular sin, but the blasphemies. That, th that this group uh, performs in, in their so-called performance. It's truly diabolic what they do. And what you guys did was show the proper Catholic response. So, so hats off and kudos to you, Jess. Thanks, brother. All for Jesus to him. Absolutely. Hey, uh, Dan, I want to jump right into it. There, there's a video of a Protestant woman. Her name is Catherine Crick. She calls herself an apostle. And of course, in the very strict sense, there's only 12 apostles. The definition of an apostle is one who was an eyewitness of the resurrection and an eyewitness of the life of Christ. So real. And our, and our bishops would, would, would be would be successors, successors. To, to the yeah. apostles. Right. So, so yeah. I, I don't think she has apostolic succession. To <laughs> not a, not apostle. At all. No. Yeah, yeah. So the video that we're going to show you, she's in a public park and she believes that she's driving out demons. And, and this is basically the model that's, that comes from Protestant Pentecostals. And many Catholics are now replicating this model. It's only a 30 second clip. Mr. Engineer, can you play the clip? Come forward. Your time is up. Uh, the demons cannot stand the power of God. And everyone are going up. See, this is the power of God. What are you doing to her? I torment her a lot. She will not preach. She will not spread the gospel. She will preach the gospel. Our time is up. Go now in Jesus' name. You must go. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. They are free. Praise God. Dan, let me make let me make a comment before you you uh, you do. I find Sorry, no. I, I don't. I don't mean to, to to giggle, but but yeah. I mean, we're. I, we're, I find yeah, no comment. It, it just, I find no example in sacred scripture, and no example in sacred tradition, where a female drives out demons by the laying on of hands in somebody's head, uh, with imprecatory prayers. This is something that is. Again, this is the error, the heresy of Protestant Pentecostalism. Uh, I've got a lot to say. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, one, I'll, one up, I'll one up you on that. I, um, I, I've yet to see in Scripture uh, where the imposition of hands was used to drive out demons. Wow. The imposition of hands is used to heal uh, for, for healing. healing. They, you know, in, the, in Jesus and the apostles, after he sent them out, imposed hands upon the sick. They, they preached. They, they drove out demons and they laid hands upon the sick and they recovered. This is part of the Great Commission to the apostles, uh, part of the jurisdictional authority of the apostles. So, yeah, so, so I, I take several, there's several, there's several things here that, that to me is wrong with this video. One is they're not in the sacred, they're in the, they're in a park. This is, this is, this is, this is fanfare. This is spectacle. Mm -hmm. When we're dealing with souls of, a, of diabolic affliction, 
there's there's you're dealing with the, the the intricacy, the intimacy between God and man, the intricacy of the human soul. And this is not something to be trifled with. Um, there's no discernment. Anybody that wants to walk up and get prayed over, there's no there's no discernment whatsoever for the psychological. The, the, you know, again, you've got a, a woman claiming to be apostle laying hands uh, on total strangers walking up. And and uh, you have no idea if this is psychological or spiritual. There's no indication to me in any way whatsoever um, that that. Uh, that that this there's anything at all biblical about what they're doing. Another thing I've noticed too, then this Pentecostal model, and in some and in, and some some of the, again, this is infused, uh, uh, have been kind of uncritically accepted and brought in to the to the Catholic Church, which is what we're trying to do is restore back to Catholic norms this this ancient uh, part of the apostolic ministry, the tria munera of the ordained, which is to rule to preach. To, to sanctify the three munera, the three obligations of the of the priesthood, the three duties, the three responsibilities of the of the ordained, and part of that is to rule and 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 to drive out demons as Jesus sent the apostles out. So so um, uh, um, anyway, I'll, I'll let you, oh, one of the things that you don't what we're seeing is yeah. is people doing this. There is a difference, a distinction between the manifestation. And extraction and deliberation. The same thing happened to one of our cases that I'm working with. They they went to a, a retreat with the with a, you know a youth retreat with a child. The woman is highly afflicted. She starts manifesting uh, at the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, the priest follows her into the parking lot, does the deliverance prayers, and uh, does drives the demon out. And and she recovered very quickly. And they notified the the exorcist team. Oh, she's been liberated. The priest said it's all over. And I said, yeah, let's 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 give this a few days. It, you know, it's one thing to sucker punch a demon, um, and get a manifestation and have him withdraw. It's another thing to have an extraction, and it's an and it's a truly different thing to have a liberation, which is lasting. And and it it, it can happen on a quick weekend. Uh, uh, a retreat or something, but what we're seeing in our experience, liberation, lasting liberation, takes a long time. As you know, Jesus Himself said that 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 the demon can come back sevenfold uh, uh, um, if the house is after the house has been swept clean, because there's no virtue to fill that void. There's no there's no um, um, there's no what's it called? There, there's just no, there's no stability prayer life. There's no union with God, a deep abiding union with God to fill that void, and the demon can come back sevenfold. Dan, Catherine Crick, this uh, Protestant woman in this video, she's not an apostle. If anything, she, she, we call ourselves disciples. A disciple means, in Greek, the student of the master. An apostle is somebody who's an eyewitness. She's not an apostle. She's not a successor of the apostles. Uh, she has no apostolic authority. Uh, Dan, I've plowed through every verse of sacred, sacred scripture from Strong's Exhausted Concordance of the Bible. It took me about two weeks in the evening, and I discovered that there's not one verse that gives or shows lay people laying their hands over other lay people and driving out demons. Not one verse. I've done the homework. This practice that you just saw in this video has no basis in sacred scripture, and you'll find, but what you will find in sacred scripture is Father's blessing their sons by praying over them and laying their hands on them. You find that all over sacred scripture, uh, but outside the family structure, you find no practice like what you saw Catherine Crick, this Protestant woman in the sacred scriptures. Yeah. So this is where we distinguish between the right to command and the right to bless the right to command the demon follows the right to bless and, and the right to bless flows through office flows through the office where one and that office dictates the structure of authority. Um, this is from uh, um, the laying of hands by uh, uh, Father Hardin. In both the Old and New Testaments, a significant symbolic action denotes, uh, just as you said, Jess, various meanings. Israel giving his parental blessing to Ephraim and Manasseh, Moses passing on his authority to his successor, Aaron, the priest, preparing the ram for sacrifice. In the New Testament, Jesus blesses children. Jesus brings the official's daughter back to life through blessing. Peter and John calling down the Holy Spirit on the Samaritans. After Pentecost, the laying of hands especially denoted the conferral of powers and authority of the Episcopy. In the Catholic Church, this is the Sacrament of Orders. Scott Hahn's Catholic Bible, uh, Catholic Bible Dictionary. The hand, there's, there's symbolism in Scripture, uh, uh, a biblical symbolism. The hands are used to describe the power or authority of a person. 
For example, the phrase, the hand of the Lord expresses the power of God, both to smite and deliver. It's saving power. To be delivered into one's hands means to be surrendered into the person's power. Hands were laid to impart blessing, to impart blessing. Jesus places his hands, etc. Um, and also the impartation of the Holy Spirit uh, is done through the imposition of hands. Um, and so we see in the Old Testament, as you say, it, it was really twofold. It was it was priestly and patriarchal and 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 oftentimes the conferral of an office. And so in the New Testament, this gets this gets picked up in the Gospels um, of for healing of the sick and for blessing. Now, how was the New Testament received? Because it gives us a tremendous indication of how this works, how the New Testament is received. And then how the gospel, uh, how the entire Bible is received in the early church and the Acts of the Apostles, um, ordaining of deacons, Acts 6.6. 6. Peter and John lay hands on the Samaritans, Acts 8.17. Ananias, one of the 72 in Luke 9, the first bishop of Damascus, lays hands on Paul so that he may regain his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So this conferral of the Holy Spirit in healing is done through the imposition of hands. Acts 13, 13, Barnabas, Simeon, Niger, one of the 72, Lucius of Cyrene, one of the 72 in Luke 9, and Bishop of Laodicea in Syria. Yeah, so so in the Old Testament, it was it was priestly, and it was it was priestly, and it was patriarchal. That was the imposition of hands. The phrase imposition of hands, this is a, this is a symbolically imbued uh, act. It also it also was used to to convey uh, office, you know, Moses to his successor, etc. Um, and so in the New Testament, or again, remember what happened in history, we now have in mystery. We don't abandon the old. We, we build upon the old and now full, becomes fulfilled, right? Uh, I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. So, so, so the fulfillment is now seen in Christ's blessing, Christ conferring the right to bless, Christ's blessing, Christ's healing. The imposition of hands is for healing. And and then he sends off the apostles with what we call the three triamuna, the threefold Dan, office. Dan, that's which, a huge distinction right there. You, we just said that this is huge. This, this answers the entire question. The laying on of hands that we see in scripture is for healing, not driving out demons. You just you you basically just stole anybody's thunder on this argument. Well, if you even look at Jesse, if you even look at the ritual, the rite of exorcism, uh, and 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 the in the in the in the, the the old ritual. What happens is um, the, there's no imposition of hands by the priest. They lay the stole on the neck, and the neck is symbolic of where where uh, she will crush the head of the serpent, the spot that which the proto-evangelicum prophesied that the head of the serpent will be crushed by the Redeemer with the cooperation of the woman with the Redeemer. And uh, then the, 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 the ritual says to place your hand with a, uh, a relic or crucifix upon the head. During the exorcism. And so this is something that was used to confer the Holy Spirit. It was can use uh, in the New Testament to for it was sacramental for ordination um, for post baptismal anointing, which we know to be as Catholics confirmation, the conferring of the Holy Spirit and the Pauline letters one five uh, one Timothy five twenty two. Don't lay hands too readily on anyone and do not share in another's sins. Keep yourself pure. Laying hands on somebody in a park is kind of laying hands kind of readily on somebody, if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> 1 Tim 4.14, don't neglect the gift you have, which was conferred on you through the prophetic word and the imposition of hands of the presbyterate. 2 Timothy 1.6, I remind you to stir into a flame the gift of God you received through the imposition of my hands. Gift of God in New Testament language is the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 6.12 the author refers to instructions about baptism and the laying of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgments as essential elements of Christian faith. The imposition of hands. I think just what, what, what the root of this is we've got a complete collapse. Again, well, the, think about this in our society. If I can identify if gender is a social construct, if marriage is a mm -hmm. social construct, if all these are social constructs and we're now operating outside of natural law, right? Uh, uh, if, if we're up, and, and by natural law or moral law, but man has a natural law is that law embedded within man uh, um, uh, that that guides him to right behavior. And so so it's graspable by human reason. If we become so unreasonable in our modern society that I can identify my gender, if that's a social construct that I can now say I identify as uh, a man or a woman or, or both or, or, or a furry, an animal, if that if we completely detach man from that. Uh, from 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 natural law, then we can completely detach the priesthood from divine positive law. And so now I can self-identify as an apostle. 
I have this gift. There I went go. through some certain training. I'm now an apostle. So we have what's called, comment on that, but then I want to talk about the universal versus the sacerdotal priesthood. Well, I know you've got, I know you've got some DDT coming right now. Yeah, it's okay, but I, I, that's why I have you here for. Dan, I, would just, I just want to mention this, this error. If people want to know the history of this error, it comes from the Protestant Pentecostal model. It started around 1901 in Topeka, Kansas by Charles Parham at, the Bethel, at Bethel College and Bible School. Uh, and so the Catholics, many Catholics have picked up this Protestant model. Now, pe- people need to live, return to a life of purity, cleanliness, and to live in a state of grace in order to be healed. You can't have somebody who called himself an apostle in a public park, which is not a sacred space. She has no apostolic authority. Uh, Doing imprecatory prayers, driving demons out. That's not biblical. It's not in scripture. Look at the the diabolically afflicted person. Uh, in in order for them to become healed, they have to be properly catechized. They have to be evangelized. They have to come back into a right relationship with God. This means that they have to reorient their intellect and their will towards God and embrace a life of order, of cleanliness. And so what we saw in that video, Dan, the, the charismatic uh, Pentecostal model uh, that some people have power, you know, some gifted ones have power in the name of Jesus. Uh, the, the, the Pentecostal model, what it does is brings temporary relief to an afflicted person because somebody's paid attention to them and their memories and their emotions are pacified and they're satiated for a while and they have a sense of peace. However, there's no healing because there's no reordering of the person's intellectual faculties. And there's no reordering of the person's interior life, which means there still remains impediments to grace. So without returning back to the sacraments, there will be no permanent healing. There's simply, you know, a cessation of pain for a short while. That's all you see in these videos, Dan. Yeah, no, and it's sensationalism. And, and we fall into this even in, in, in among Catholic circles. Yes, yes. You and I could, I, you and I could tell a hundred stories of the crazy stuff we've seen, <laughs> right? But I'm not going to. That doesn't. You know what I mean? I will use a story to illustrate a point, but I'm not going to do that to sell books. What we want to do is lay down DDT, the stuff from the beginning. Devil By the way, everybody needs to buy uh, uh, Dan's books coming out one month. I'm telling you, this book is going to be what Carl Keating's book, Catholicism and Fundamentalism, was to apologetics. Dan Schneider's books, uh, book Spiritual Warfare, a manual on spiritual warfare, this is going to have the same effect in the world of spiritual warfare. I am telling you, this is the locus classicus for lay people on spiritual warfare. Sorry, Dan. Go ahead. No, no, no. I appreciate it. I mean, everything we're talking about, I r- try to run it through in a systematic way. You know, I write as a scholar, but I also write as a, as someone who's been working this for, for many, many years now. And, and also as a guy, long before I got a B- PhD in biblical studies, I got a PhD in common sense <laughs> in the south end of Columbus, Ohio, by, by my father, may, may the Lord rest his soul, uh, who was the original Gran Torino. So we're just trying to provide the way the Gran Torino, the son of the Torino, would, would try to put down for people to understand this, but in, in logical and theological ways. So one of the one of the things that we're seeing, Jess, is that remember that there's a distinction between the universal priesthood of the of all the baptized and the sacerdotal priesthood uh, of the ordained. Right. So there's a distinction. And the Second Vatican Council says that the, the, the difference is in both essence and. And in degree, mm. that priesthood, the problem is when you collapse that priesthood together, that my priesthood is no different than than father's priesthood. Then what do we have is we have functionalism. Right. The, the, you know, we have we have I function as this and you function of that. But but we all now when people say that 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 can we cast out demons? Yes. Within our office of head of household as fathers and mothers in our homes, over our temporal goods, over ourselves, but we're, but setting up shop in a park in the parish hall basement is a very dangerous proposition. So it's the collapse of the two priesthoods. But once those two things collapse, then what we what we're left is is functionalism. And I hear that this is just clericalism. What you guys are saying is clericalism, right? This is why I quote Anigo Montoya. You keep using that word. I don't think you have what it means. This is not clericalism. This is Catholicism. This is Roman Catholicism. Is it clericalism, Jess, when, when you're scrambling to get somebody to come bless, find, give final last rites to your father when he's dying, <laughs> when you need to go to confession, 
Uh, is that clericalism when you need to receive the Holy Eucharist, the real body, blood, soul, divinity? Is that clericalism? This is part and parcel of the sacerdotal priesthood and the dignity of the priest. I'm going to ask you another lead-in question, Jesse. What does Father Chad Ripperger, Father Winston Kabading, who is the chief of, uh, of um, in the Philippines, who trains extras all over the world, Monsignor Rossetti and Monsignor Charles Pope all have in common? All of, all of those four intellectual, spiritual warfare giants, all of them say, lay people, don't lay your hands on other pay- pay- people to drive out demons. All of these four, I call them the fantastic four of spiritual warfare. All of them, these fantastic four say, lay people, don't do what you saw in that video. That's not Catholic. So, so uh, this is a huge issue right now. We, we, we really need to, 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 uh, uh, to really flesh this out and for people to understand. Um, I, I pulled up a document, um, and, and uh, I want to go over it again as well if we have time in this segment. Um, but it's, it's through the, the, the new book of blessings or the revised book of blessings. Uh, in the old book of blessings, there's no mention of laity giving any blessings. Okay, this is, this is a book for clerics. And the new b- the blessing, here's what it says. Um, um, paragraph 18 in the introduction. The ministry of blessing involves a particular exercise of the priesthood of Christ. Fair enough. Universal priesthood and the, the sacerdotal or hierarchical priesthood. There's two priesthoods, and we all share in that same universal priesthood. The difference is he'll be a priest forever, right? Uh, I'm not going to be married after after me, me or my wife pass away, but the priest will be a priest forever. So the ministry of blessing involves a particular exercise of the priesthood of Christ in keeping with the place and office within the people of God belonging to each person. In keeping with the place and office within the people of God belonging to each person, the exercise of this ministry is determined in the following manner. And he walks down. The, the authors walk down. Bishop, with those, bishop uh, uh, priest, deacon, acolyte or reader, and then layman and laywoman. And when it says, layman and laywoman in virtue of the universal priesthood, a dignity they possess— because of their baptism and confirmation, may celebrate certain blessings as indicated in the respective orders of blessings by use of the rites and formularies designated for lay ministers. Such lay persons exercise this ministry in virtue of their office. For example, parents on behalf of their children. It doesn't say, for example, those who have this special gift of driving out demons because they went through a life in the spirit seminar. It says, for example, in the office of parents on behalf of their children, right, or by or by reason of some special liturgical ministry or fulfillment of a particular charge of the church. And, and there they're talking about catechetical work. So offering blessing, may the Lord bless our students today. There, there's an office there. But the lay people bless and by correlation, drive out demons according to their office over the children. If you look at the different rituals that lay people are encouraged to do blessings, they're deprecatory when it's an object and it's imprecatory when it's over their children. Dan, one more uh, source that you didn't quote is the Catholic Encyclopedia. I'm not sure if you did. You go to newadvent.org, you can you can look at the article, Imposition of Hands. It says the laying on of hands is a priestly action or an action from an Israelite father to his son. You're listening to Wednesday War College. Just remember, Dan Schneider, stick around. We'll be right back. Huge topic. 